A school is a bit like running a business. Um, you've got stakeholders at multiple levels, you've got a budget, uh, you've got very specific deliverables, you've got time frames. I mean, it really is, it is a big business. And yet principals have never been given any business management tools. And so people with business experience who've had the benefit of running departments, running budgets, uh, running meetings, having to report to stakeholders, managing projects, um, have had a different skill set and they've often had corporate training that has enhanced those skills. And so all of the skills that a principal needs to run that business, a business person has acquired without even being aware of the privilege that they've had of acquiring those. And so when you put the two together, what you have is somebody who knows everything that there is about education and somebody who should know a great deal about what it means to run a business. And there is an opportunity to share that knowledge. And so I think people join Partners for Possibility because they're passionate about making a difference to the state of education in South Africa, but the reality is they don't know how, and they don't know enough about it because they've been on the outside. So as a business person, my eyes have been opened. I have learned an enormous amount about the education system in South Africa. Despite the fact that my father was a headmaster and my sister was a teacher, I have learned an enormous amount. Um, the principals get the exposure to the business skills, um, and the idea is that you then together are able to collectively solve problems for a school better. That's the, that's the obvious sell. Um, I think the much less obvious sell from a Partners for Possibility perspective is that this is probably one of the most challenging personal development processes that you can go through if you embrace it. So, I mean, yeah, I had a long, long list of problems and there is still a long list of projects, challenges, um, some of them infrastructural and some of them um, procedural and some of them around um, uh, WCED allocations of staff and things like that. And each and every one of those takes time to solve and that's my default project solving mode is, okay, there's something visible that needs fixing, yay, I can fix it. Um, and it took me, as I said, two and a half months to realize that actually um, there is a lot more that Ye is not telling me. She's telling me the very obvious stuff. Um, and we needed to get to a point where she was comfortable telling me about the stuff that is not obvious. I think for anybody who is a manager of a, of a team of people, um, it's really difficult when you've tried everything you know, all the tools in your toolbox to try and change a person's contribution to the team and it's not working. Um, you think, well, okay, you know, how many different ways can I say this, but it's not working. And when Yeye sort of confided in me that she was having a real challenge with a senior member of her staff who, um, well-intentioned, but just literally would go 180 degrees in terms of everything that was being done as opposed to what Yeye wanted. When she told me that this was the issue I was facing, I didn't have the solution at hand, which is a good thing. It meant that I was forced to listen. We probably spoke for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and she was quite emotional. I still at the back of my mind had this sort of, but I don't have the solutions to this particularly challenging problem, and I don't feel like I've really helped because I'm one of those people who quite likes to see tangible <laughs> results. And it was only when I went to one of the um, circle of practice meetings that Partners for Possibility has as, as the program with other principals who Ye Ye and I had started the journey with together that I heard those principals saying how much they valued just having somebody to listen to them. Uh, and that's when it kind of struck me just how how important it is for these principals to have somebody who doesn't judge them, doesn't report to them, whom they don't report to, um, where they can just be completely honest about the difficulties that they're facing. Because it's a hierarchical environment and they have to put on a brave face to all of their staff members. They have to let the school governing body that they've know that they've got it under control. And the reality is they don't get a lot of help from the management layer and it sit above school principals. Um, it's a lonely place being a, a principal so to have somebody who is a partner in every sense that says I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna give you some ideas that I think might work and you can tell me if they suck and we can go back to the drawing board and try again um, and it, take, it took 
a long time to get to that point where I could be completely honest and Ye could be completely honest back with me and say, thank you, Sandy, but no thank you. Um, or gee, that, that might actually work. That's not something tangible or visible. You can't say at the end of a year, that's the thing that we have accomplished. Um, but I think that everything I've seen and heard from the participants in the Partners for Possibility program, it's one of the most um, undervalued by anybody outside of the program, but most deeply valued by people in the program, is this partner who will listen. Not necessarily provide the solutions, just listen and be there. And sometimes it's a closed door and a tear and a hanky, and sometimes it's a beer in a bar. Um, so yeah, it's uh, um, perhaps the most tangible project that Ye and I have tackled together is that um, a company approached the school, I had nothing to do with it, they approached the school and said we would like to make a donation of computers and obviously the company was looking to get their own CSI points and of course typically <laughs> they decided to make the donation three days before the end of the tax year and Ye said fabulous we'd like to take the computers and the school said but we need a tax certificate at which point Ye was like a rabbit in the headlights because Schools are not Section 18A companies, they are NPOs, but they are not allowed to issue their own tax certificates. And this company was saying, well, if we don't get a tax certificate within the next three days, we can't give you these computers. So yeah, yeah, phone me and said, help, I, I don't know what to do. And obviously from um, being in uh, business, um, it wasn't a completely foreign idea to me that, you know, pick up the phone, get hold of somebody at SARS, figure out how we make a plan for this. Um, and it was then went beyond just somebody wants to donate the computers because that's all very well, but you need desks for them to be on, you've got to network the entire system, you've got to make sure that the software that's loaded has actually been done by WCED and there's always a challenge because they didn't buy the computers, somebody else did. And it's, there's, there's a lot of moving, moving parts and I have a lot of project management experience so that was something very tangible that I could help Ye Ye with. And um, we're hoping to, have, hoping to have a grand opening of the computer room uh, at the beginning of next term with all the relevant dignitaries around. And it's gone from 20 now to 30 computers, which is fantastic. And the school that is involved has realized that it's not about, sorry, the business that's involved has realized that it's not just about giving computers to the school. It's about an ongoing relationship with the school. And they have committed to providing ongoing support and maintenance for these computers and over time time as and when they have, um, even in their own environment, computers that have become uh, you know, obsolete, two or three years old, they're still perfectly adequate to be used in the schools and they want to be a long-term partner also of, the, of St. Paul's, which is fantastic. And nobody asked me to come and consult to the principal, they asked me to come and partner with the principal and that word partnership implies developing a relationship and then from the space of the safety of that relationship helping. Um, and it's, it's very intangible because you don't know when you volunteer who the individual is that you're going to partner with. You don't choose that person um, and you have to find a way to make a relationship work with somebody who in the ordinary course of life you might never even have more than a five minute conversation with. It's a challenging journey um, and I have seen some partners back off from it. Uh, I've seen some principals back off from it because it's actually hard. It's easier to go where you can do a tangible fix of something that is wrong in a school. It's harder to go where you do the intangible fix or improvement, fix is the wrong word, of your own personal leadership style and the principle of their own personal leadership style and interpersonal skills. So I think for somebody who um, is in that stage in their life where they are willing to put in the emotional and personal commitment, um, it's far more impactful for me than any of the many, many uh, personal development programs that I intended in the corporate world.